I have no problem in calling myself uh, transsexual or transgender. I am a single gay dad. Celibate bisexual. <laughs> as a HIV positive person and also as an Asian and also as a Christian. I'm Torres Strait Islander, I'm a lesbian. Probably as a um, transgender person, I suppose. The term I sort of use more is psychological hermaphrodite. I'm just basically an old queen. <laughs> As an organisation, we know that prejudice has a number of negative outcomes. You know, we're talking about drug and alcohol abuse and, and uh, depression and, and mental health issues and that sort of thing. And when you start thinking about the impact of double uh, prejudice, you know, talking about being in a, a, a member of a minority group and then a member of another minority group, it, you know, you really can't help but be a little bit worried about what that can mean for the person's state of mind and, and the impacts that can have on them. Oh, there is a lot of prejudice in even going back in the, when I was first in the scene, even just between lesbians and gay, gay guys, yeah. there was a very big gap. Um, les, a lot of lesbians didn't like mixing with gay guys and gay guys didn't like mixing with lesbians at one stage. Um, after I, just after I came on the gay scene, there was actually two separate, completely separate gay scenes, one for the lesbians and one for the gay guys. They didn't mix. Prejudice is one of the things that is is out there, period. Um, so I'm not sure whether we can differentiate between prejudice within the heterosexual community and the GLBTIQ, whatever you want to call it, community. The reason why I say that is because first and foremost we're all human beings and we all have prejudice. So uh, it's not going to stop just because they're gay and lesbian. You know? Sometimes though it makes it a little bit harder because it is a smaller community, so then it seems to be more prejudice within that smaller community. Heaps of discrimination, especially when it comes to being a HIV positive person. Um, when you're trying to negotiate um, with people on the internet, uh, or when you tell someone, when you meet them at a cafe that you are HIV positive, uh, they get freaked out by it and they like the perception out there is that um, you can't have sex with a HIV positive person treating HIV positive people like they were the has-beens you know of the gay society um, in the beginning of the HIV there was very big discrimination against that and I think it's still there and that's why a lot of people I know don't let anybody else know that they are HIV positive. Um, I've got some good friends who've become hate fully blown AIDS, but they still won't let, that they practice very safe sex, but they won't tell anybody that they are because the minute they do, they know that they, they will stop having sex, people won't come near them. When I first got on the scene, I was doing haircuts on HIV positive people. And I actually lost my reg some of my regular customers because they didn't want me using the same scissors and combs on them that I was actually using on the HIV positive people because I was quite, I was bragging about it because I was quite excited. I was helping these people, you know, and you do three or four haircuts on a person and then you go into a funeral sort of thing. And I was excited because I was helping these people at least feel better in themselves by giving them nice haircuts and that sort of stuff. And I actually lost some of my other clients because they said, oh, no, we don't want you touching us if you're touching them. Um, I've seen a lot of prejudice and, um and I've lost a lot of friends um, through it and um, either just moving away from the community because they've just been so harassed. Having a lot of experience as a trans person and feeling sort of the isolation from the gay and lesbian community myself, not sort of really fitting as a woman and then not really being accepted as a woman even by the gays or the lesbians. Oh, definitely. Something like mental illness in particular, I mean in the wider community and as much in the uh, like queer community, just from the attitude that 
depression is often thought of as most people will assume it's just like being sad. So they think, oh, well, I've been sad and I've gotten over it, so I've conquered depression. When, you know, they're talking about uh, a shift in, a minor shift in mood, while depression is, you know, far more sort of physically debilitating and ongoing. Um, Also, with a mental illness, uh, no matter kind of what you do, like, I mean, I've got like two master's degrees, but... Uh, I've often been uh, people have assumed I must be stupid to still have depression uh, assume what I sort of say has no credibility because uh, the association of mental illness with crazy and also with criminality they are forms of prejudice because I'm being judged before they've even sort of looked at what I accomplish or what I do they're making a great deal of assumptions which exclude me I definitely got a lot of prejudice from people who were in the closet and who could easily pick me as being queer um, and so they would pick on me because it looks it made them look good so I got a lot of hassle from that um, then I came out as gay um, sort of as a gay woman before I realized I was a gay guy um, and then I just didn't it wasn't so much direct prejudice that I got but it was more that people just didn't understand and I didn't fit in because I still hadn't worked out who I was Um, and so there was this great split between me and the community I just didn't know where I fit I felt very different. In 1978 uh, I was at the first Mardi Gras I was 18 uh, which was in July and there was a lot of prejudice there. Mm. Um, Part of it came from me too because I went there (laughs) as an 18 year old young dyke and um, knew that there were lots of, um, I'd heard there were going to be lesbians there so (laughs) my reason for going wasn't very political, Uh, my reason for going was because there were going to be lots of lesbians there but however when I got there I yelled out to them and said shave your fucking underarms (laughs) you feminists and um, where's all the cute girls Um, and then when the police came of course they were all my brothers and my sisters. Um, so I became part of the family. They will act often like straight people act towards people who are gay or bisexual. They'll be like, oh, it's so nice that you're open about these things. What must it be like? And you just want to be treated as another person. Um, and they can't quite understand the fact that they're treating me as if I'm sort of this other. When and they complain so much about being treated like that themselves by straight people. So. I've been a part of a, a group that was a family orientated group that uh, was predominantly female and over time I was kind of edged out of the group, um, not contacted, didn't get emails and the group still runs and you know runs well from what I hear but I was edged out of that which was really really sad you know I, I thought it would have been a great opportunity it was the only group that I know of that my kids would have had an opportunity to mix with other you know, um, other kids whose mums and dads were gay as well. Um, there's been times I've walked into, I've walked into a party and I've had a group of people say, "Oh my God, she's black," and these are um, these are some lesbians and some gay boys, and um, there was about six of them, and they walked out, and I went, "Oh my God, I am black, damn." <laughs> and they just all looked at me, and they just kept walking, and they're just gone, "You bitch," and I went, "Yeah, whatever." And there's been occasions where I've walked into um, a bar and um, it's just to get a magazine and there were six girls at the bar and two of them looked around and looked at me and they went, black trash. And I went, okay, well, that's good. I love your vocabulary, we're getting better. And they just looked at me and they said, we can't be in the same space as you. And they left and I went, okay, that's good. Probably the prejudice, the most prejudice I've got is more of an inter-relationship prejudice, Um, whereas not my ex-lover but my ex-ex-lover left me because she's a lesbian Mm. and I'm transing and she said boys smell. Um, They do actually, the testosterone (laughs) stuff. But I actually don't have that smell, maybe I cover it up with Kuros, I don't know, I wear nice cologne.